You're listening to The Mayor with Philip Levine, Mayor of Miami Beach, on Sirius XM Insight. I'm Philip Levine. You're listening to The Mayor on Sirius XM Insight 121, and we're talking about all the great people in Florida, the most amazing state, the Sunshine State, and talking about great people, we have somebody who does unbelievable things for our state, Eric Draper, who's the executive director of the Audubon Society of Florida, and there's nothing more important in our state than to conserve and restore the natural systems and environment of our state. So, Eric, thanks for being on. Thank you, Mary Levine. It's really good to have a chance to talk with you. So, invi- and such great things about the state of Florida. Well, it's I true. Agree. It's true. I love our state. I know you do. And by the way, the environment, everything going on, the animals, it's its crucial. It's important. And I wanted to get in it right with you and talk to you about, you know, some of the most important issues in our state, you know, with wildlife and protecting and maintaining our natural resources. One of the things I keep reading about, Eric, is this, this screw worms with the key deer. What's going on with that right now? Is that something that we're, we're fighting back on? Well, that is- that is kind of scary to think that there's this uh, this fly that can uh, that can bite people and um, and animals and uh, and put this worm in there. It's just Horrible! A, what a strange thing! And and I completely support what's being done right now to try and control the eradication of the screw worm and hope that no one in Miami gets affected by that. Because that's such a big deal. I mean, these these beautiful key deers. I've seen them. I've grown up watching them. And to think that this. Uh, uh, this could be hurting them so bad, and God forbid that uh, uh, they would wipe out a population of them, which I hope will never happen. One of the things you mentioned, key deer. One of the things that is so interesting about the Florida Keys is when you get those kind of isolated uh, environment like that. Um, and birds and animals they evolve completely different characteristics than, than maybe mainland species. So it's the same sure. species as white-tailed deer, but it's these tiny little, very friendly deer that are been preserved in the big pine key. Definitely. Eric, tell us about Audubon just briefly in Florida and, and the mission and what you do and and uh, and uh, how you help our state. Well, Audubon was founded in Florida 115 years ago by Teddy Roosevelt. A lot of people don't know that. And we were formed to stop uh, the hunting of plume birds, those uh, beautiful white egrets that people see all around now. And, and here we are still a more than a century later, fighting to protect the Everglades and wetlands and water resources so that uh, those birds are still there. Unfortunately, as a result of the drainage and development uh, in the Everglades system, we've we've lost about 90% of the bird life there. But uh, I'm an optimist, as you are, sure. and I believe that we can bring those birds back to the Everglades if we just get the water conditions right. Well, let's talk about that because that's key. And I, matter of fact, I was over by Lake Okeechobee uh, over this past weekend, and uh, and talked to some of the locals. And we know what's going on and the issue with drainage. And you know, please give share your thoughts. Tell you know for the listeners all around the country, uh, understanding the Everglades and what's happening. Because of course, they heard about that terrible green algae uh, pollution we saw going east uh, to some of our coastal towns. Uh, what what are your thoughts on this? This has just been a devastating year for coastal communities, uh, particularly up around Stewart and over in the Fort Myers area, where this uh, polluted water that uh, is drained into Lake Okeechobee has been released to the coast. And there's a pretty easy solution to that, which is to send some of that water south. And uh, by cleaning it up and sending it south, it helps with Everglades National Park, which is in your backyard. It yeah. also actually helps with the drinking water supply uh, for Miami-Dade. Um, you know, I um, I had to tell you a funny story. I, I have an office in Miami. I'm down there a lot. And when I go out to eat in nice restaurants, somebody would come up and offer a bottle of water. It's like, no, I want to drink Miami Dade water because it's the best water in the state and it comes from the Everglades. A lot of people don't know that, but right. that's Everglades water and it's extremely clean. And I think it's some of the best tasting water in the country. I agree with you. I agree with you. Matter of fact, we should maybe we should use it as a brand, bottle it and call it Everglades water. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good idea. I like that. I would certainly choose that over spring water any day just because it's got that nice taste to it. But uh, it's cleaned up because it runs through that wonderful filtering system we call the Everglades and, and benefits, I don't know, five, six million people get their drinking water out of the Everglades. No question. Eric, so the big issue, of course, and we hear about and read about it in Florida and our listeners will understand, is that you know when the water doesn't drain south and it drains to the side uh, east – uh, because of some of the uh, 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 
products that are in that water, it's it's turning into an algae. And, of course, that gets phosphorus and runoff from the various uh, uh, industries, agriculture. Yes, there's a tremendous amount of nutrients in the Lake Okeechobee water, both phosphorus and nitrogen, and, and most of those come from agricultural activities, fertilizers, animal waste, um, but a lot of it also comes from human waste as is, is yep. far north as Orlando, uh, runoff, uh, even from even from Disney. And that water collects in Lake Okeechobee, and then when it's too much but is released to the coastal estuaries, uh, the phosphorus causes a, a bloom of, uh, of a bacteria called uh, algae, and, um, and that blue-green algae is, is actually poisonous to people. So wow. It's been a real tragedy this year. Tragedy. Show. We've got to fix it. It's crucial that we do this. Uh, and fixing it involves two things. One is to get the pollution out of the water. That's really important that uh, we've, we insist that the state of Florida – enforce the laws and get the pollution out of the water. We're not doing nearly a good enough job on that. Right. And secondly is that we build some uh, some storage capacity, both north and south of Lake Okeechobee, so that okay. we, can, we can take some of that water during the rainy season and store it and leave it there and then release it into the Everglades during the dry season. So you, you All would, that has to, go ahead. You would say that's one of our most important environmental issues facing the state right now. I really do. I think that that's the most important uh, issue, but uh, an issue that you've worked on, I've really admired your work on this also, is adapting to climate change. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. you're, you're right there on the front line of, of watching what happens when we get these high tides and uh, sea level rise, and, and I'm seeing it all over the state of Florida during my travels. Um, and I think we've got to do something about the, the international issue with climate change. We also have to do what you've been doing, which is trying to figure out how to adapt our coastal environments uh, so that we don't lose the wildlife that lives right there on the edge of the uh, ocean. You're absolutely right. Now, let me ask you a question about something that I grew up listening and hearing about, and I wanted to know the status update. Our world-famous Florida panthers. What, what's the status of the uh, of the panther itself in Florida? Uh, you know, the Florida panther is the symbol of... Um, of our natural environment, particularly the South Florida environment in the Everglades. I've got a picture of one I'm looking at in my yeah. office right now. Uh, we just love the idea of those big cats roaming wild in the Everglades. Uh, they can't live without us really helping them. We've had tremendous uh, mortality from uh, from roadkill. Panthers getting killed crossing roads as more people move into South Florida. We really need to work to expand their range um, so that they can move through the rest of the state. Yeah. Um, and and I think there's a way that panthers can be compatible with cattle ranching and with the with right. with other wildlife. Well, that's great to hear. Great to hear, Eric. I I can't thank you enough, and I want to just thank you as a as a fellow Floridian for everything you do to protect our environment and and educate the public because, you know. Our environment, our ecosystem, the animals, uh, the most important thing in our state. And uh, you do a great job uh, guarding uh, these uh, natural resources. So thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I appreciate the recognition. Appreci I'm glad to have a chance to talk with you. Thank you so much. And I'm Philip Levine. You've been listening to The Mayor on Sirius XM Insight 121.